Hello and welcome to another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast where we experience and explore everything that makes small towns great. I'm your host Abby and there goes my lighting. <laughs> if you're watching the video version of this, I uh, this is actually the fourth time I've tried to record this podcast. Let's uh, Let's just be real with each other for a second. So I first attempted to do it outside and I realized my microphone wasn't working so I brought my microphone inside, plugged it into my computer. Turns out it needed a software update. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just record it on my computer. Well, and then that wasn't working either. So then I finally switched cables and then switched back to the original cable. And then I went back outside again and then I spilled my drink everywhere. And now I'm inside because the mosquitoes were eating me alive. So if you're watching the video and hearing me scratch my legs or seeing me scratch my legs, it's because I got ate alive in the five minutes I tried to record. It's been a rough day. <laughs> <laughs> but in all reality, it's been a great day. It's actually been a great couple weeks, and that's what we are talking about on today's podcast. So today I wanted to give just a little bit of a life update, um, kind of what's in store for the Small Town Tourist podcast and pages this summer, and just kind of chit-chat with you guys, because we don't do this all too often. I'm pretty much an interview-based podcast, so it's nice to do a solo show once in a while and just kind of stay up to date with what's happening in my life, and hopefully you'll update me with what's going on in your life as well. So where to start, where to start? Let's back up to July of last year. Let's go all the way back to July 2023. So I had come across an Instagram page called Dishing Up Digital. It is run by 28-year-old Ellen McKenzie. She's from New Zealand. And what she does is social media management. So she helps brands run their Facebook and Instagram pages and make content for them and post their content so they don't have to worry about it. I came across her page. I came across her podcast. And I just really liked her vibe. I felt like she was doing something really cool. And she was running her own business and let's be real, making lots of money doing it. And I'm like, well, why can't I do that? Like, I feel like I could be that. I feel like I could do that for brands. Like, I'm very savvy with social media. I have a blogging background and I have the radio background and I make podcasts for not only me, but I was also making podcasts for my friend Liz at the time as well. So I'm like, I can, I can do this. So I looked into her Dishing Up Digital course and I took it and cannot say enough good things about it. Great course, so informative, lots of great knowledge in there. And in that time that I was kind of still sussing out Ellen, for lack of better terminology, I ended up getting three more podcast clients. I started working with Amanda Radke. She's a cattle rancher in South Dakota. She's also a public speaker and businesswoman. And I started working with my cousin, Megan, who is an entrepreneur and public speaker. And I started working with Babies on Broadway, a baby store here in central Minnesota. Started working on all those three podcasts. And when the time came for the course where it's like, you need to pick your niche as a social media manager. I'm like, well, I think my niche is actually podcasts. Like, I feel like this is the route that I am most com confident and comfortable in with social media management because all of the people that I'm making podcasts for are using it as marketing tools for their business. They're using it to promote their brand. They're using it to go deeper with their customers. They're using it to tell their stories. And so that was kind of the route that I wanted to take. And it's the route that I took because then I started working with Instagram influencer Brittany Scovel in January of 2024 this year and then um, I actually talked my husband and his best friend into starting a podcast as well go check out the mush money podcast if you're into golf sports betting but yes yeah, so I'm working on all these different podcasts I'm working with all these clients and suddenly April rolled around and I tallied up how much work I was doing in a given week hours wise because I was still working full-time for Stearns County and I was working like 75 hours a week on average. Like it was a lot. I was exhausted because in addition to that, I'm DJing weddings. I'm hosting bar trivia. Like I have a lot going on. Okay. I'm a busy person. And that's about when I made the episode saying that the small town tourist was going to an every other week format just because I didn't have time to be making my own podcast, which is heartbreaking because I love making this podcast. I absolutely adore it. So 
yeah, I realized in April, I'm like, things need to change. I need to figure out what direction I'm going with all these different little side businesses that I seem to start and what is actually lighting my soul on fire. And it turns out that the podcast part was making podcasts for clients, helping them create beautiful, wonderful, exhilarating content. Like this is what I love. I I say it's all the fun of being a radio DJ without any of the corporate overlords telling you what to do. So I sat down with my husband, I made a game plan and I said, okay, if this is what I want to do, this is what I need to be making in order to do that, to quit my job at the county so I do not go absolutely insane trying to do everything all at once, which more on that in a minute, put a pin in that phrase. (laughs) So I ended up putting in my notice in early May at the county. I had my last day there on May 31st. I actually hinted at that in my Todd County Fair episode. Um, Yeah, I put in my notice, quit there, and I am now officially self-employed. Working for me, Abby Graves Productions. I am running this ship, and I love it. I know it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. I'm not that delusional. (laughs) Trust me, I I am well aware. Um, This is only the end of week two when I'm recording this podcast of being self-employed and last week was crazy busy like I think I just crammed so much into that first week I just had a to-do list that was a mile long because I was trying to play catch up from working a full-time job and then starting this and it was just a lot so at the end of last week I was pretty pretty tired but this week I feel like I found a really good flow and I realize it takes more than just two weeks to establish a routine for something like this but I feel like I'm really finding my flow with that and I'm feeling so much less overwhelmed which is awesome that was the whole goal because I just constantly felt like the world was burning around me like that meme of the dog where it's it's fine it's fine everything's fine he's sitting at the table and the house is burning down around him that's how I felt 24 7 I was literally just going insane with the amount of work that I had during work, after work, before I went to bed at night, like it was just insane what I was doing. And I'm feeling so much better now. On Monday night, I actually got through my to do list for Monday. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can make dinner. I haven't got to make dinner in a year. Like I, I actually had nothing going on. I mean, I did have to go volunteer with Dancing with Our Stars that evening, but that wasn't until eight o'clock. I had like three hours where I didn't have to do anything and it was awesome. <laughs> so baby steps and little little inches of progress with me being less chaotically busy. It feels so good. I'm so happy that I made the switch. And like I said, I'm not delusional. This isn't going to be perfect all the time. Things are going to happen, but right now things are pretty awesome and I'm super excited about that. And part of that awesomeness is getting to revive the Small Town Tourist blog. So I've been doing the podcast for, oh gosh, we've been going a year and a half now. Happy year and a half birthday podcast. That's exciting. Um, But in that time, I kind of slacked on the blog side of things, which is what the Small Town Tourist initially started as, was the smalltowntourist.com writing about my adventures and I was pretty good about making those companion blog pieces for a while and then I got all those clients and you know the whole cobbler's child's last to get shoes situation the blog was completely abandoned it's fine it's fine everything's fine (laughs) but this week I actually had time to revive it and it felt so good to write again oh my gosh I haven't written in so long and it felt so good to make those handful of blog posts so it's nice to get back to that and kind of my game plan for this summer with the podcast with the blog is I want to make sure I get back to consistency with it I have free time now this podcast started as my hobby and I want it to stay my hobby because I do truly love creating it and I want to make sure that those companion blog pieces get made those promotional Instagram reels like I want to treat my podcast like it's one of my clients, but in a hobby way. Sounds messed up, I know, but this is what I love to do. That's how this whole business started is because it's what I like to do. So (laughs) Um, the plan for this summer is to hopefully get to a consistent 
weekly podcast release with the companion vlog pieces. If you have suggestions of places that I should check out, people I should interview, events that are coming up, I'm looking towards like the August, September events at the moment. Um, send them my way. I would love to hear about them. I, I love suggestions. I love conversations. So send me those people that I need to talk to, those places I need to check out. I really want to try to do a consistent job of putting those out again, like I did last year. I feel like I was so good about it last year and then like the world just kind of crumbled. So looking forward to getting that done. But in that same breath, I don't want to go insane again. I don't want to burn myself out again. I, I'm getting so much better as I get older and as I experience things and realize what I don't want to do. I am I know the signs of burnout better. I know when I'm about to like absolutely run out of wax in my candle. Like I know the signs now and I feel so much better. I'm confident. I know what's going on. <laughs> so I am going to do my best to be consistent with the podcast, but not let it overwhelm me because I was sitting down and looking at my calendar this week of all the fun things that are going on in the month of June and the month of July in my neck of the woods. And unfortunately, a lot of things are happening the same weekend this year because of how the 4th of July falls. So things like the Swanville Carnival, which is something I go to every year, Vicky's Camp and Country Jam, which I am going to on the Friday to see Jody Messina because this girl's not missing out on seeing Jody. Um, the Todd County Fair, the Minnesota Prepper Expo, like all these really cool things are all happening on one weekend. And it's hard because you try to do as much as you can, but you can't do everything is what I have to keep telling myself. Like I want to be everywhere all at once, but it's just not possible. We cram so much fun into Minnesota summers and it's just not possible to do everything. So I'm trying to cherry pick the things that are really, really important to me, things that I already have tickets to, that sort of thing, and just do my best to go to as many things as I can, but not feel overwhelmed by it. Because in addition to doing all the fun things, I'm also working weekends. Like I have weddings to DJ and these have been booked for over a year. And for being real, I love being a wedding DJ. Like who doesn't love partying and celebrating the best day of someone's life? So I have a lot of weddings to do. I'm actually kind of in the middle, like smack dab middle of my wedding list right now. And I just, I'm trying to be rational and I'm trying not to do the, oh, woe is me. I, I, I can't do everything that I want to. Like that's life. You're not going to get to do everything that you want to, and that's okay. You just do the best you can with what you got. That has been my motto for 2024. We're doing the best we can with what we have, and I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job of it. Like, not to toot my own horn, but toot toot on that. I feel like I'm doing a good job of finding a good balance between work and play, and I just can only hope that the rest of this summer goes that same direction. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Self-employed, making podcasts. If you know of someone who should start a podcast or you want to start a podcast, send me an email. I would be happy to help you with that. And yeah, just going to have some fun this summer and go where the wind takes me within reason. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast. I truly appreciate you being here. Check out the smalltowntourist.com. The blog is alive. It's like Frankenstein. It's alive. <laughs> it's been brought back to life. Give it a little CPR. So be sure you check that out. Um, be sure you follow me on Instagram at the Small Town Tourist if you haven't already. I'm pretty sure that's where a lot of you come from. <laughs> so I appreciate it. And yeah, if you got suggestions for cool places that I need to check out or people that I need to talk to and interview and learn more about, send them my way. Do not be shy. Please send me that message. Let's have that conversation and experience cool things together. So I will catch you guys next week for another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast. Happy summer.